Welcome to EPG Partshala. In this module, we will discuss the various aspects related to biopesticides. Coming to the introduction part, biopesticides are the products that are derived from natural products. Those natural products, they can be minerals, bacteria, plants and animals and are used to control pests and pathogens. US EPA, according to US EPA, pesticides that contain microbial pesticides, plant incorporated protectants and biochemical pesticides as active ingredient. Throughout the world, there is a confusion regarding the use of the term biopesticide. Therefore, to clear that confusion, International Biocontrol Manufacturers Association that is IBMA and International Organization for Biocontrol IOBC 2008, they use the term biocontrol as an alternative of biopesticides. Coming to the next part that is the historical background of biopesticides. It dates back to 17th century when the plant extracts of nicotine they were used as biocontrol against the plum beetles. Another research by Augustin Bessie in 1835 showed that the white muscadine fungus that is Buberia vesiana could be used as biological control against silkworm. In the early 19th century, different studies regarding the use of plant waste or mineral oils as plant protectants were carried out. With the expansion of agricultural research during the early 20th century, the number of studies and proposals for biocontrols were developed. Among them, the first and most accepted biocontrols were spores of the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis. In 1901, Japanese biologist Shikten Ishiwata isolated Bt, that is Bacillus thuringiensis gene, from a diseased silkworm. After 10 years, Ernst Berliner in Thuringen, Germany, rediscovered it from the diseased caterpillar of floor moth. In 1911, the pathogen Bt was classified as type species Bacillus thuringiensis. In the early 1920s, the French started using Bt as a biological insecticide. The first commercial Bt product that, the, that is sporine was developed by France in 1938. Another plant-based product used widely during 1917 by US Navy was from pyrethrum extracts. They used it with kerosene oil and sprayed for the control of house flies and mosquitoes. In 1924, Stodinger and Ruzika, working in Switzerland, reported that the insecticidal properties of pyrethrum are due to the presence of two esters which, are, which were named as pyrethrin 1 and pyrethrin 2. In India, under the Insecticide Act 1968, so far only 12 types of biopesticides have been registered. These are neem-based biopesticides, Bacillus thuringiensis, NPB and Trichoderma are the major biopesticides produced and used in India. Coming to the classification part of biopesticides, they can be classified in different ways depending on the source organism, active ingredient, their mode of action, etc. However, the most common classification is based on the source organism and on this basis, they can be classified into three major classes and these classes are microbial pesticides, plant incorporated protectants and biochemical pesticides. Now, we will discuss the current status and global scenario of biopesticides. The biopesticides market is comparatively weak as compared to the synthetic pesticides due to the lack of awareness, inconsistent performance and other constraints of biopesticides. However, keeping in view of growing awareness about environmental safety, increasing demand for organic food, initiatives of government etc the biopesticide market is expected to grow at higher rates in future currently the global use of biopesticides have been reported 
to grow at a rate of 10% annually with the production rate of 3000 ton per annum. In market, biopesticides are available in different physical forms like granules, dust, betable powders and liquid concentrates. Among different types of biopesticides, the use of microbial biopesticides is highest that is 60% followed by fungal that is 27% and viral that is 10%. Coming to the next part, the biopesticides sale throughout the world. The sale of Bt products is US dollar 201.79 million. The sale of virus products is 41.22 US million dollar. For bacteria it is 49.25, for fungi it is 77.08 and for nematodes and other it is 18.14 US dollar million. Coming to the next part, different biopesticides along with their trade name and target. First is Azotobacter radiobacter K84, Galtrol to control crown gall disease. Second is Bacillus lichenformis strain SB3086 and it is sold under the name EcoGuard for fungal diseases. Now what are the different advantages of these biopesticides? Biopesticides they control pests in an eco-friendly and non-toxic manner. They cause less harm to ecosystem in comparison to the chemical pesticides. They offer the following advantages that is they have zero or little residual effect. Residues of microbial biopesticides they produce no effect on living beings. Moreover, they are applicable in organic farming and they have the potential to be used as a part of integrated pest management. Thereafter, there are less chances to develop resistance by pests. Narrow range of action that contributes to specificity towards a particular insect pest. They are biodegradable in nature and effective in low concentration. They provide pest control over several generations. They have non-toxic nature along with non-pathogenicity towards the targets. They do not affect the eco-friendly insects such as pollinators and soil microflora and therefore they help to improve the plant growth and crop yield. Coming to the limitations and constraints of the biopesticides. Most of the microbial and biochemical biopesticides they cannot be used alone for the complete replacement of the conventional pesticides. Therefore, these biopesticides they are used as a component of integrated pest management so as to decrease the utilization of conventional pesticides up to a greater extent. Biopesticides they have to be used in rotation with conventional burns and they help to prevent pest resistant problem. As biopesticide is totally a living organism, therefore it is very important to maintain the vigor and microbial load. Sophisticated equipments they are required for the production of quality biopesticides. Their market performance is very poor as the quality of biopesticides product is not good. In many cases, biopesticides that are sold in the market, they are contaminated and microorganism count is also low which results in poor performance. The market for biopesticides is not well established like markets for chemical pesticides. Due to lack of widespread studies and consistent results, farmers get confused whether they should adopt biopesticides or not. Pesticide storage requires specific instruments and environmental conditions which are very costly and they cannot be afforded by farmers, shopkeepers and sellers. Moreover, budget required for biopesticide production is high as high-tech instruments are required. 
Since the biopesticides contain live microorganism, therefore these are considered as pathogens. Import and export of biopesticides is much difficult as compared to the chemical pesticides. Now coming to the remedies for biopesticide production, their usage and marketing. Firstly, adulteration should be avoided during the packing of biopesticides. Biopesticides should have restricted entry intervals. It means that when the field is sprayed with the pesticide, how much should be the time limit so that the workers can again come back to the field. They should have no harvest restrictions. Harvest restriction refers to the time period between the application of pesticide and harvesting and marketing of treated crop. This will provide better flexibility to the farmers during harvesting. Lyophilized and dried preparations of biopesticides should be used to achieve viability and stability of biological products. The registration of biopesticides is expensive as compared to their production and this poses a major hurdle in their development. The problems related to their registration should be addressed and there is a need to carry benefit as well as risk assessment studies of biopesticides. The biopesticides should be approved or registered on the basis of the results of risk assessment studies. The developed biopesticide strain should be monitored extensively to assess its threats to the consumer and environment. Microbial biopesticides, they should be protected from contamination in order to improve their shelf life. Liquid formulations should be avoided and more attention should be given towards the dry formulations. Sustainable and controlled release of biopesticide is very necessary and the pathogenicity and virulence of some microbial strains, they can be improved using biotechnological tools. Now there are some aspects such as resistance, potential of dispersion and persistent, they should be studied thoroughly. Now coming to the regulatory framework, main status and legal requirements for biopesticides. Environmental Protection Agency regulates the use of pesticides under the authority of two federal statutes. The Federal Insecticide, Fungicide and Rodenticide Act that is FIFRA and the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act that is FFDTCA. Finally, the Pesticide Registration Improvement Act that is PRIA establishes the Pesticide Registration Service fees for the registration actions in the three registering divisions of EPA's Office of the Pesticide Programs. Registration of biopesticides is facilitated by Biopesticides and Pollution Prevention Division that is BPPD. This division is responsible for the promotion of the safe use of pesticides as well as biopesticides. EPA encourages the growth and employment of those biopesticides that serve as an alternate to conventionally used chemical pesticides. EPA requires minimum data for the registration of a biopesticide in comparison to the registration of conventional biopesticides. Moreover, EPA takes less time for the assessment of biopesticides since biopesticides take less data and registration time but still EPA carries out rigorous reviews to make it sure that pesticides they will not produce any adverse effect on living beings and the environment. The registrants have to submit a diversity of data including the, their composition, their degradation time toxicity and other features of the pesticides. Now coming to the experimental use permits, ex emergency exemptions and state and local need registrations. Firstly, field testing is very very necessary to evaluate the efficacy of a pesticide. If a food crop is affected during the testing, then that biopesticide must be destroyed or it should be consumed only by experimental animals unless tolerance has been established. For small scale field testing of genetically modified microbial pesticides or non-indigenous microbial pesticides that United States Department of Agriculture USDA has not previously acted upon. 
the applicants must submit a notification to EPA for determination of whether an experimental use permit is necessary or not and even if the testing on less than the 10 crore. Under section 18 of FIFRA, federal or state agencies, they may request a limited approval for an unregistered use of a currently registered pesticide product or the use of an unregistered pesticide product. Such a request can only be granted when there is a potentially severe economic or human health impact and no other alternatives they are available for pest control. Now before a pesticide can be marketed and used in the United States, FIFRA requires that EPA should evaluate the proposed pesticide to ensure that its use will not pose any unreasonable risks of harm to human health and the environment, including non-target species. This involves an extensive review of health and safety information. Pesticide registration is a process through which EPA examines the ingredients of a pesticide, the site or crop on which it is to be used, the amount, frequency and timing of its use and storage and disposal instruction. Now, a pesticide cannot, be le cannot legally be used, sold or distributed if it has not been registered. Additionally, the agency recommends that registrants request a pre-submission meeting with the appropriate registering branch. The pre-submission meeting is an excellent opportunity to discuss products in development and steps to ensure a timely registration decision. All information exchanged at these meetings is held confidential until a pesticide registration submission is made. Now coming to the Indian scenario of the biopesticides. Biopesticides, they account for 2.89% of total pesticide market in India. It is expected that there will be an annual increment of about 2.3% in the upcoming years in biopesticide market. Under the Insecticide Act 1968, only 16 biopesticides have been registered till date. And these are Bacillus thuringiensis variety Israelensis, Bacillus thuringiensis variety Kurskaki, Bacillus thuringiensis variety Galeri, Bacillus fericus, Trichoderma viridi, Trichoderma hargeanum, Pseudomonas fluorescens, Buvaria vesiana, NPV of Helicoburpa amigera, NPV of Spodoptera lutura, Azadi rashtin that is a neem based product, Symbo pogon, Ampylomyces quiscalis, Metarhizium anisoply, Pyrethrin pyrethrum, Verticillium lecani. Now we will discuss some success stories related to biopesticides in India. Indian agriculture includes some beautiful and successful stories about the utilization of biopesticides or biocontrol agents. Firstly, diamond back moths, they were controlled by Bacillus thuringiensis, Helicoburpa attack on tomato, cotton, and pigeon pea was controlled by Bacillus thuringiensis. Mealybugs, mango hoppers, and coffee pot borer, they were kept under control by Buberia. Gram crop were protected from the infestation of Helicoburpa by NPB, that is nuclear polyhedrosis virus. Attack of sugarcane borers was controlled by trichogramma rods, and wilts in various crops were controlled by the use of trichoderma based products. Now, Coming to the several regulation and policies of biopesticide usage and promotion in India. Indian government has made certain policies and acts for the promotion and regulation of pesticides including biopesticides. The first such act is the Destructive Insects and Pests Act 1914. 
it was an act to prevent the introduction into and the transport from one state to another in india of any insect fungus or other pest which is or may be destructive to crops secondly the insecticide act 1968 this act regulates the import manufacture sale transport distribution and use of insecticides with a view to prevent the risk to human beings or animals and for matters connected therewith third act is the insecticides rule 1971 the main objective are the functioning of board registration committee laboratory registration of insecticides grant of licenses packaging and labeling appointment of insecticide analyst and insecticide inspectors transport and storage of insecticides in transit by road water and rail these rules also take into account the provisions regarding protective clothing equipment and other facilities for workers during the manufacture of insecticides next act is the plant fruits and seeds order 1989 act it was related to the regulation of import into india next act was promotion of integrated pest management 1991 related to the promotion of use of bio pesticides neem based pesticides bacillus based bio pesticides insect pathogens as alternative to chemical pesticides next act is the destructive insects and pest amendment and validation act 1992 next is national agriculture policy 2000 the policy aims to attain growth rate in excess of 4% per annum in the agriculture sector growth based on conservation of soil water and biodiversity growth with equality growth that is demand driven and caters the small markets and maximizes benefits from exports of agricultural products in the face of challenges arising from economic liberalization and globalization growth that is sustainable technologically environmentally and economically and lastly the act was the national for policy for farmers 2007 now coming to the next part that is the resources for more information of bio pesticides firstly literature is available free of cost on world wide web there are several online services and databases that have been developed only to provide beneficial data to researchers and farmers the services and database that are known till date are international biocontrol manufacturers association association of manufacturers and international organizations is the main objective of ibma it provides information on the website that is http www.ibma.ch news html then online information service for non chemical pest management in the tropics that is uisat main aim of this service is to cut down the use of harmful pesticides and provide more protected alternatives to needy farmers and the information can be obtained from www.oisat.org then next is the international organization for biological control this organization is having affiliation with international council of scientific unions it is a non profitable organization that establishes biological control quality standards then comes bio pesticide industry alliance this industry is involved in the facilitation of development and commercialization of pesticides from natural products and their acceptance at global level next source is the bio pesticides database this database is related to the basic things such as identification toxicological and physico chemical data for pesticides used in agricultural field students in this module we discussed about what are bio pesticides what is their global and indian scenario and what are their different benefits and limitations thank you